Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I hope everybody had an absolutely amazing three-day weekend. And we are now in the month of June. We are less than two weeks away from the end of this extraordinary school year. And I am super excited because we have one of our Los Al High School graduating seniors and we have our alumni. We have Owen Smith, who will be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And then we're going to be continuing on with our song for a whale. And we have McAuliffe's own counselor, Shelby Olmstead, who will be reading chapters 32 and 33. So everyone, let's get ready. Let's get set. And let's go out there and have an absolutely incredible day. See you soon, everybody. Hello, Weaver. My name is Owen Smith, and I am a graduating senior of Los Alamitos High School, as well as being a Weaver alumni. In the fall, I will be attending Oregon State University in Corvallis, Oregon. A favorite memory of mine, my time from Weaver, is when we went out to the quad and sang a bunch of songs like, Weaver whale shower, weaver whales, we're the smartest creatures in the sea, ba 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 boo. Uh, I miss that. I miss that a lot. I don't know how I'd lose those memories. They're going to stay with me indefinitely. And another song, the high-flying flag, where we waved our hands like the flag. The, just perfect. I remember doing that all the way back in kindergarten, some 12 years ago. Long time ago. <laughs> Shout out to you, Miss Peel. Um, please stand with me and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remove all hats and hoods and place your right hand on your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Please be seated and thank you very much. This is Shelby Olmstead, the counselor at McAuliffe, reading chapter 32. Our next stop, Skagway, was a pretty town, but it was hard to think about anything but Blue 55. Everything I'd worked for would be happening the next day. I'd gone through so much to make it happen, and then I couldn't believe it was time. At least I hoped it would be. 55 still wasn't singing. Maybe my song would work, and he'd start singing again when I heard it. Grandma and I ate burgers and onion rings at a restaurant that used to be an old saloon. When it was time to pay, Grandma handed the waiter a $50 bill and left a big tip. Had some luck at the casino. Nice, keep winning, and you can live on the ship all the time. Grandma laughed at that. I wish. After lunch, we did some sightseeing around town. A small crowd in the park watched lumberjacks with chainsaws carve upright logs into sculptures of bears and salmon. From there, we wandered into downtown area. Grandma stopped at the door of a gift shop and asked, Want to look around in here? The shop took up most of the block and had everything from bumper stickers to t-shirts to packaged salmon. Postcards with Alaskan scenery filled the spinning rack. Right then, it hit me how much I missed my family. I couldn't stand to think about how worried they were, so I'd been trying not to think about them at all. It wasn't working. I shuffled through a few cards with animals on them. Then I started, I settled on one with a picture of a breaching humpback in Alaska written in cursive letters in one corner. At the cash register, I paid for the postcard with change from my pocket and stepped aside. With a pen I borrowed from the counter, I filled out my home address on three blank lines on the back of the postcard. Next to that was space for a short note. Dear Mom, Dad, and Tristan, I want to let you know I'm thinking about you. Please don't worry about us. Sorry for leaving without telling you. I just had to find the whale. Love, Iris. When the customer at the counter left with his bag, I showed the cashier the postcard and tapped the place stamp here square in the corner. She pointed across the street and said post office. I found Grandma browsing, browsing through the t-shirts. Just going across the street to mail this, I told her, be right back. She held up a green, I break for moose t-shirt to check the size. Okay, I'll stay here and look around. I hadn't been to many post offices, just the one near to home sometimes when my parents had to mail a package. But this had to be the tiniest post office in the land. It looked more like a little cabin with wood paneling all around the inside walls. Only one person worked at the counter and a few people stood in line. I wanted to ask if I could go ahead of everyone since all I needed was one stamp. 
but that was probably against post office rules. Instead of hanging on to the card to send later, I gave it to the postal worker to mail for me right then. By the time it got to my house, our trip would be almost over. The important part, anyway. If Blue 55 was in Appleton, like he should be, I'd be meeting him soon. Nothing else would matter after that. My family would know I've been thinking of them and not just of myself. I didn't see how I'd get any sleep that night, thinking about how close I was to Blue 55, about all I had done and how far I'd come. We'd be sailing into the sanctuary's water soon. We might even be sailing by Blue 55 right then. He'd need to sing again so I'd know. I opened the sound file on my phone so I could feel his song against my hand and wished he was out there joining in. If I didn't get to sleep by six, I'd go out to the front of the ship to watch us pull into Appleton. At some point, I did fall asleep. When I woke up, Grandma's bed was empty. I sat up in bed, wondering where she could be. Maybe she was just out for a walk. That was kind of a thing she would do. But in the middle of the night, I grabbed my coat and wandered in the hallway. Empty. Maybe same th something came up and she didn't want to bother me. Or could this be like the time she took off for the beach without telling anyone? But she couldn't have gone far. We literally were on the ocean. I couldn't think of where to look for her. It was too late for any classes to be going on. Usually if she wasn't in the cabin, she was out on deck reading or watching the water. It'd be too dark to see much, but I couldn't think of where else to check. The ship was as busy in the middle of the night as it was during the day. People swam in the pools and mingled around the bars, carrying their umbrella drinks. I had to try to think like Grandma. Where would she want to go? The casino. Even though I wouldn't be allowed in, I'd have a chance of spotting her from the wide doorways. A crew member kept his eye on me as I stood at the edge of the casino entrance. I guess to make sure I wasn't going to run in and try my luck at a slot machine. The place was packed even in the middle of the night. As far as I could tell through the haze of cigarette smoke, Grandma wasn't there. Same thing on the opposite side where I circled around to the other entrance. Some of the machines weren't visible from where I was, so I'd check back later if I had to. It was impossible for one person to search the whole ship, but I looked everywhere I could think of. I even tried the internet cafe in the library. When I didn't find Grandma at the pool, out on the deck, or in any of the diners, I went back to the cabin to see if she had returned. Still not there. She should have left me a note at least. Nothing on the desk except the daily schedule and JoJo's business card. I turned to the back of the card where JoJo had written, Customer Relations can page me if you need anything. Did she mean any time? Of course, she would be asleep, but this was important. This wasn't a call for extra towels or a room cleaning. What if something had happened to Grandma? I ran back to the elevator, clutching JoJo's card. Maybe the people at customer service desk wouldn't need to call her, but they'd find Grandma somehow. Surprisingly, I wasn't the only one who needed customer service that time of night. Three people were in line ahead of me. They could possibly have anything as important as missing grandma. While I waited, I tried to think of where else to look. Finally, it was my turn. When I stepped off the carpet onto the concrete floor in front of the counter, vibrations tickled my feet. I slipped out of my shoes and stood there in my socks. Music was playing somewhere nearby, loud music with those low bass sounds that really shook a radio speaker. The man behind the counter waved to get my attention, saying something that looked like, can I help you? I shook my head and stepped aside to let the passengers behind me take his turn. The thread of memory waited for me to grab onto it. Something about what Grandma had said that first night on the ship. The carpet muffled some of the music, but there was enough vibration for me to follow. It grew stronger as I ran, shoes in hand, toward the stern. In front of the tipsy Marlin bar, I stopped. During the day, it was always empty. Not now. The bar was packed with people dancing and laughing and holding drinks. At the front of the crowd, in the lights of the stage, hands flying, was Grandma. A banner hanging from the ceiling read, Tipsy Marlin Karaoke Night. As far as I know, there weren't any other deaf people on board, but everyone was watching Grandma. This must have been going on for a long time because she taught the audience some sign language. The words break it down appeared on the ly lyric screen, which grandma signed. Then everyone did some weird dance and signed together. Stop. Hammer time. 
It was like grandma was signing a language everyone in the world understood. Mom believed this. Mom wouldn't believe this. She'd been wanting grandma to make friends, and now it looked like she'd made a whole room full. Watching grandma reminded me of the humpback whales that leaped out of the ocean, the symphony players. If someone could write grandma's signing on sheet music, every color would be splashed all the way up and down the musical scale and off the page. I was too amazed to be mad at her. As I stood there holding on my shoes in one hand, I wondered if my own family would feel the same way about what I'd done. I'd wandered off too, much farther than grandma ever had, but if they saw this was where I was supposed to be, that I was doing exactly what I was supposed to be doing, maybe they'd understand just a little. The way grandma looked then, that was how I'd feel when I met Blue 55. She also taught the audience how to do deaf applause. Instead of clapping when the song ended, everyone waved, the, waved their raised hands. As grandma stepped off the stage, she got a standing ovation. I didn't care if I wasn't allowed in a bar. I ran to grandma and hugged her, then stepped back. How? I couldn't even finish my sentence. I'm sorry to worry you. I didn't think I'd be gone for so long. I couldn't sleep. So I got up to take a walk around the ship and stumbled upon karaoke night. I mean, I pointed to the stage. That? How did you do that? After I watched some of the performers, someone tried to get me to go up and sing. I told them I'm deaf, and they asked me to sign the songs with them. Pretty soon, I was doing my own performance and getting the crowd to join in. Looks like everyone had fun, right? Yes, it did. Like everyone had fun. More importantly, Grandma had. It, I'd wanted to make the trip by myself. For the first time, I was happy that a plan of mine failed so I could be right there with Grandma. Hello, this is Shelby Olmstead, Counselor at McAuliffe, reading Chapter 33. The chattering of dolphins filled the water as the pod raced past him. They play like this through the day, falling behind and darting ahead, then leaping in front of him. He led them to a school of fish. They were too large for the whale to filter through his baleen and swallow, but they made a feast for the dolphins. While they ate, the whale circled the fish to keep them close. The pod swam slowly, weighed down by the meal. The whale glided alongside a dolphin and lowered his head an invitation to swim onto his back. This is how they communicated, soundlessly. The dolphin threw herself onto the whale. He sank down to keep her just below the surface, then propelled his body through the water ahead of the pod. This happened once in a great while, this meeting with dolphins. They would find him and spend the day leaping and racing alongside him, chattering. If only he knew what drew them to him. He would try to bring them closer more often. Was it a sound he'd made that was like theirs? If it was, he would sing that sound again and again. He wasn't like them. They didn't sing the same songs, but they understood each other in a way. He knew they had fun diving alongside him, jumping onto his back for a ride through the surf. The whale dove down, then up to the surface, bursting out of the ocean. The water splashed high around him when he crashed down on his side. He rejoined the pods, notes of joy waving through his song. If they could play like this every day, at least for a little while, he wouldn't be so lonely. But dolphins never stayed for long.